Sports News confirmed today that Haverford West first team manager Nicky Hayen has left the club. He's becoming head coach of the Club Bruges side, having had a, a real impact at the Oggy Bridge Meadow Stadium. Just six months after being announced as the man to lead Haverford West County out of the Cymru Premier's relegation places, it was announced that Nicky Hyen was heading back to Belgium to take up a role with high-flying Club Bruges. The opportunity to work with a club in his homeland who were heading into their own Champions League adventure was simply too good to turn down. Having steered the Bluebirds to safety in the 2021-22 season, having been five points adrift upon his arrival, an emotional farewell to the Bluebirds players, staff and community was published and the high and ball chapter was closed. Managerless and just a few days away from pre-season fixtures kicking off, it was the start of yet another new era at the Augie Bridge Meadow Stadium. It was a strange one. I mean, we, um, I literally on a, on a Saturday morning went to look at my phone to plan or to find out when Nicky was due to come into London. We were planning our, uh, our pre-season the week before, looking at players for next season and went to check my phone to see if he'd messaged and uh, an email from Club Bruges came up, which is uh, not something you expect to see as chairman of a, of a Welsh Premier side. So a bit of a, bit of a shock, I had to check it was genuine. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was literally that much out of the blue. So obviously they had conversations with Nicky over that weekend and it was, um, yeah, it was, it was obviously very real and a great opportunity for him. He was due to be in London on that Monday to, 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 go, through, um, to go through the season. So we obviously followed that through. He came to London, we spent all day discussing. But we, we built up a good relationship as well. So I was trying to speak to him as a, as a friend and as a chairman, I was trying to do everything I could to, to keep him after the impact he made uh, in quite a short space of time, but I think when that comes in, there's there's very little we can do to to make him stay. And it had probably been stupid not to have taken it, to be honest. Being back with, back with his family at the biggest club in his home country, so yeah, completely out of the blue. Saturday morning, last thing I was expecting to see, but what a testament to the job that he did in a short space of time and his reputation still back in Belgium. And I think it shows that we we did a pretty good job as as a board finding him in the first place. So um, yeah, obviously a great, great loss for us, but delighted that he, he's been rewarded by such a great opportunity. So that, that obviously then led us into a full a recruitment process as we did when we hired Nicky. Um, and to be honest, we had great interest again. I was really surprised with the first process when we, we hired Nicky, the, the draw that the club had and the, the, the kind of football names and experience that were interested in the role I went in with no expectation and to be honest the same going into this one um, I don't think you can take it for granted that you're going to have a number of high quality candidates to pick from um, but look when, when we realized we had to, to go out and do a full process we, we acted fairly quickly we got something up straight away and uh, yeah just tried to act on anything that came in but again really surprised there's ex-national team assistance there was players that have played at the highest level that have um, that have the pro license and managed at good levels managed with good success international again huge huge interest from abroad and as with Nikki, it's not something that we're afraid of doing it was about finding it was about finding the right person and we are really pleased to welcome onto the show the new manager of Haverford West County Tony Pennock um Tony good to have you with us um why Haverford West County what excites you about this opportunity um, it was just from the first conversation I had with Rob, really, when he outlined his plans for the club over the, over the next few years and the ambitions that um, himself and the board have got. I just, it, you know, straight away, I just decided, yeah, I know it, it's a job that I'm very interested in. And, you know, we, we, we progressed and had a few more conversations and, and then Rob offered me the job, which uh, I'm extremely uh, grateful for and looking forward to the challenge ahead. 
Rob's keen to to carry on the good work of of Nikki and and Wolsey before. So um, yeah, that's my job to 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 carry on doing the work that they've done and, and hopefully make us uh, a little bit better and, and get us further up the table. Great achievements working through Swansea for such a long time, moving up to Hull and work, working through their academy and a good number of years in their first team and being highly respected by so many up there and and I think leaving off his own back as well rather than being being moved on again shows the value that they they saw in him and yeah throughout the process he was excellent I think the style of football we a really good high technical standard of play good attacking intent a um, lot of pace and yeah Tony bought into that kind of uh, that, that philosophy and kind of came in with this is this is the style that I also want to play so it wasn't much of a no one had to really give anything away. It was kind of we're on the same page pretty quickly. And yeah, I think his experience is vast. I think real, uh, I think to leave a club like Hull to, to take a plunge in, in the big chair for the first time is, uh, is quite brave for him. And I think for him, he needs to, it needs to be the, the right job. And I think to put pressure on himself to come and do that, I think was really, uh, was, was really positive for us. That he, he saw this as the, the next place for him to, to come and sort of start his manager journey straight off um, and yeah I thought we're really happy. With Panic's arrival imminent the tough task of Swansea City's first team kicked off the Bluebirds' pre-season campaign. A superb experience for a new squad but a humbling defeat proved the catalyst for an unbeaten run of fixtures across South Wales in the summer months. Members of Russell Martin's Swansea squad then visited Pembrokeshire for a return fixture that showed clear improvements from Pennock's Bluebirds. Tony knows knows a lot of the players. He knows he knows the league and what's required. So I think um, going into the season, we've we're prepared the best we can since since Tony came in at the start of July. Um, good performances in pre-season. Um, struggling again with some injuries, but that's that's just been a story of of the club over the last few years. But I think we've got a good enough good enough squad to to compete in the top six. I think so. Um, yeah, we're all on the same page. We're geared up for for top six. I think we've got technically a really good team, good characters, and yeah, I think we're we're in good shape going into the season as best as you can. With with obviously changes happening during the summer that we weren't expecting. With Corey Shepherd, Kyle Patton, and Elliot Scotcher all carrying long term injuries, academy graduates were having their first taste of senior football, alongside a handful of new sign ins who were also starting to find their feet in both training and friendly fixtures. It was during a pre season training session that news broke regarding the League Cup draw with players soon realising that exciting new left-back Rhys Abrusese's first competitive fixture was to be against his former side, Barry Town United. Having impressed in the Cymru Premier for a number of years, the former Wales age-grade international who came through the ranks at Cardiff City was one of many debutants. The excellent team performance put Barry to the sword. A first goal for new sign-in Lee Jenkins, two from Jack Wilson and Abrusese himself net in the fourth goal to put the Bluebirds in the hat for the next round with a 4-2 win. It was earlier in the evening's contest that another new addition to the Augie Bridge Meadow also made their first appearance. A number of improvements were being made by the club to improve the facilities at the Augie Bridge Meadow Stadium. New LED floodlights that not only were providing a far greater level of brightness, were also helping to reduce the club's carbon footprint and running costs. As the league season countdown continued, 
both staff and volunteers were continuing to make sure things were ready on and off the grass. Yeah, so as I see that the new dugouts are there. We look quite smart actually with the Valero signs on them. And uh, also we repainted uh, all the clubhouse and the hallway. Uh, so ready for the new furniture to come in. Completely got out the changing rooms, ready for the new designs to go in there. New furniture. So they've all been painted and everything. Toilets all been painted and cleaned. So it's been a busy three or four weeks. Club partnership manager Wyndham Williams was also juggling an exciting initiative linked directly to one of the club vision's key strands and in order to maximise engagement with the local community, a town centre club shop was ready to be unveiled. The impact has been brilliant. Uh, the amount of people we've had come through the doors, just finding out about what the football club is doing on and off the field, in the community, in the academy. Uh, and yeah, it's just more visible and vibrant. You know, people can drop in here now and find out about Half West County. A collaborative effort that brought local and national partners together to support the project, alongside the experience of some of the club's directors, the Bluebird's Nest was officially opened. With the shop doors open to all of Pembrokeshire, another initiative was hoping to deliver exciting new opportunities for supporters both new and old. It's quite popular in Ireland where you, you give fans the opportunity to engage closer with the club, um, to have their say in how the club is run. I think we're a really open-minded, fan-centric club and I think that really builds on that. Um, so we wanted to bring in something that had good value to, to someone obviously taking on a membership, um, but also make them feel a lot closer to the club than, than they would have been previously. Um, I think it's the first it's been done in this league. Um, we had, we've had a bit of success. We want to obviously, obviously build on that and, and take that as far as we can and give as much kind of engagement with, uh, with fans and members of, uh, of, of Bluebirds 1899 as we can going forward. Yeah, look, I think as, as part of the membership as well, we wanted to raise awareness of, of the club and what we were trying to achieve. So we were just trying to come up with some ways to to have a bit of fun, be a bit disruptive. Um, it was around the time of the whole Super League fiasco, which was, which was obviously recently um, clubs putting funds before fans. So we, we just wanted to just have a bit of fun, create a bit of interest. Um, I think you see it a lot in in social media where these kind of campaigns can have quite a big quite a big impact. So we we were on a board meeting and decided one day we'd just. Um, go with the, the Tevez Welcome to Manchester, stick Jack Wilson on there and drive it between Old Trafford and the Etihad for, for eight hours um, just, just to raise a bit of awareness and there were some very weird looks um, I think around the Manchester and Salford area as, uh, as that was happening but it had the, it had the effect we wanted to, to, to show that we're, we are a fan centric club uh, if you want to adopt us as your second team, if you want to venture away from, from these kind of clubs where obviously financially and, and commercially is becoming huge machines which is pricing out a lot of the fans and and probably not putting them first so yeah we wanted to show look we're a, we're a small club but we put fans first we've got a lot of ambition and we want you to uh, to be a part of it to to help us grow but purely it was probably for more of our own amusement than, than anything else s4c scorio cameras were back in town for the first fixture of the season and with the club's new membership scheme proving successful, an impressive attendance turned up to witness last season's Cymru Premier Playoff Final winners, Carnarvon. Captain Carnarvon, John Gwachad Enfawr i Carnarvon, yn eich wyr gemau ail gyfle, ewch gynghrair Cymru. Having overcome Flint Town United in the final, the Canaries had earned the right to travel north up to Scotland and face Clyde FC of Scottish League One. Having competed well against the Scottish full timers, narrowly losing to an injury time winner. It was set to be a big opening day challenge for the newly assembled Bluebirds. Ach, my pass of Red and Redai, Jack Wilson. Wilson, he's on court, and Josh Tibbetts and Dali Deer. The Hreda Wally, Tony Pennock, and he came to Greg and Tevel, who all are hold for. Joe Hall and Edwin George. Fawn, Kiro, George, Cavalli, Gracie, Abel, Amanda, Postin, Petta, John, and Cody, Ashon, Bradfield, and Ergid. 
and I think a Ferdiat am the final at Wedal Gandil and Reese. A tense afternoon was eventually won by the home side, as with just minutes to spare, a cleverly worked move involving Abrusesi and Henry Jones saw Jordan Davis's back post header secure all three points. A cross shot and perfect can Jones at Jordan Davis and Akori Kavri Amatamar. First half, we're excellent, just couldn't score. But luckily enough, second half, we just carried on, carried on, and yeah, the goal came. And it's nice to open your account on the first game. So yeah. Made by Blaney, Boris again, the second point of the cherry. Oh. Edwards, I think. Yeah. Yes, Town are leading 1-0 at the showgrounds. The first away fixture of the season was at another of the Cymru Premier's teams who'd had the opportunity to play in Europe across the summer. Based on their finishing league position the previous season, Town had been drawn the relatively short distance to the European trip of facing Irish Premier Division's Sligo Rovers. Oh my God! And here comes Barra oh no. again! Oh no! And it hits oh. the crossbar! Oh is my it days. in? No, apparently not! How is it not oh in? My With both teams having had the chance to win the tie, it was a despairing defeat on penalties for the North Walians. Former Barra player and current Bluebirds number 10, Henry Jones's long range assist for Jack Wilson to score almost secured all three points for the travelling Bluebirds before a late equaliser meant that the points were shared at Mice Taggart, leaving players and staff a little disappointed before the journey home. I'm pleased with the boys, I thought they've competed really well against a good team. Um, they set the standards now for the, for the season ahead and um, we just know that we need to be better in the final third. With fixtures now coming thick and fast, newly promoted Airbus UK were then welcomed to the Oggy Bridge Meadow, and it was the home side yet again who took the three points after a convincing 3-0 win. Henry Jones' right foot proved clinical for a third consecutive game, with Jordan Davis narrowly missing out on an impressive hat-trick. Really happy, obviously, um, yet, to, yet to lose, so it's really good to keep the win streak going. Um, we started poorly, so we were a bit disappointed, um, but obviously Henry scored that free kick and we come in 1-0 up. Uh, we are probably a bit lucky, um, but then I think our, our class showed then in the second half so yeah, to win the game. After three games, the Bluebirds were unbeaten, and albeit tongue-in-cheek, were celebrating being top of the league. A tough midweek away fixture at Penabont soon followed and with the club looking to continue the momentum, decided to provide a bus for supporters to head up the M4. The offer was quickly snapped up and a fully loaded 54-seater took the 150-mile round trip. Excellent run and he's brought to ground and I think this might well be an early card. And it is an early card. This is where Hanford West needs to take advantage of the, the transition. Now we've got Johan Evans over this ball, but Jordan Davis also. Johan Evans, Evans! Oh my goodness, what a save by Kelland Absalom. Well, he got that ball over the wall. And After a nervy opening exchange from both teams, Ben Fawcett managed to get his first goal of the season. And it's Fawcett! Ben Fawcett! Before a succession of quick goals from the home side put the Bluebirds' unbeaten run in danger as they trailed 3-1. With the game almost at a close, there was a small consolation in the dying moments for one of the most recent academy graduates. With three minutes left! The long throw creating uncertainty in the Pennebont defence. The ball bounced kindly. To Yori Humphries, he scores his first Welsh Premier goal. Well done him. Pennebont three, Haverford West two. Well, would you believe it? Of all the players who you're expecting to score, perhaps Haverford West goal, Yori Humphries would have been the, your last pick. But he's done really well. Up for the long throw, swivelled well. Beat his man. Pennebont three, Haverford West two, and that is the final whistle from Bryn Markham-Jones. And Saklissa. 
Ond mae dal yno y bêl fel Tatem Boeth ar hyn o bryd. Rob Blaise ar peniad. Dylan Rees ar y foli am gôl gan Captain Hulkford. The Penabon fixture was to prove a pivotal game in the first half of the Bluebird season as from being top of the league after three games, having led twice against Newtown in the next fixture, it was to be another disappointing 3-2 loss. A turny at Ashton, the monster gets George Hughes, Hughes are Koenig, and Aaron Williams, and he throw he down. Listen, we got taught a lesson today by an experienced team, and um, our youngsters have to learn from it. I know we have spells where for the first 25, 30 minutes we were excellent, um, and yet again we don't come away with what we should have. You know, we're missing chances, and we're not punching teams, and then, you know, experienced teams again, like today, <clears throat> stay in the game and um, punish us. Deg munud o'r ail hanner wedi chwarae y gig hir gan Firth Wild ydy'r target fel arfer y bêl yn rhydd yn y cwrt. Two more losses in the league to Carnarvon and Connors Key teed up an opportunity for a change in fortune in the Nathaniel MG League Cup. A midweek away tie to Taft's Well allowed Pennock to shuffle his pack, providing 16-year-old Harry John with an opportunity to start his first competitive fixture for the club. A physical encounter with a team who were at the top of the Cymru South and unbeaten themselves at the time ended up 1-1 after 90 minutes, with penalties bringing the game and the opportunity to progress in the League Cup to a disappointing end. Tony, following last Saturday's Welsh Cup exit, what sort of reaction can we expect from your team this evening? A good one, I hope. He is a little bit like Joe Allen. He's on the ball all the time, and that's just not because of the stature of him. You feel sorry for the boys. I feel sorry for the people who came to watch the game. It's just ruined the game. Here we go. Come on, Jack. Take one for the union. One shot. One opportunity. Oh, yeah. Have it all if you like. And you can have it all if you like.